Hello again, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy. Up first, hazardous weather graphic. We've got a winter storm warning out here for the northwest, along the northwest coast, into the Kobuk Valley. And that's out for tonight, and then there's winter weather advisory here in the yellow-shaded areas there for the uh, er areas of the Brooks Range on up toward Arctic Village, and that's also out for tonight. And back here in the warning area, looking for another one to four inches of snow. Some areas possibly seen as much as 14 inches with gusty winds of 40 miles an hour. That'll create visibilities less than a quarter mile at times with the uh, snow and blowing snow. And then the conditions here off to the east uh, will be better than they will be back here in the warning zone. So call it visibilities maybe under a mile at times in uh, winds that are under 40 miles per hour. Moving on to the uh, next graphic here, this is Kotzebue today at 11, 11 a.m. And of course, sun's up now above the horizon, has been, actually has been in barrel for about five days now. So definitely is in Kotzebue. You can see a pretty nice day there. Temperature, an amazing 36 degrees above zero at uh, time, the time here. And uh, looking at their observations, still showing mostly clear skies uh, into the afternoon with temperatures above the frost point. And moving on to satellite imagery, you can see uh, south to north flow here continuing with uh, the main jet stream taking everything to the north, but uh, you can hint the pattern slowly shifting eastward. And a lot of mostly just uh, high mid clouds coming in over the interior of the state. Uh, some areas seeing some uh, light snow anywhere like Nome seeing one to two inches there and up along the Point Hope, Cape Lisbourne area, and possibly Kivalina. Also some pretty gusty winds associated with this, uh, gale force winds. Otherwise, uh, rain, Kodiak Island in the milder air on up into Kamishak Bay. Then kind of a mixture, and it's a real hit and miss mixture here coming up in, advance, in this area of clouds here. And then it gets a little more showery back to the west. And a few snow showers over the Pribilofs today and some isolated rain showers around in Alaska to about False Pass. Otherwise, southeast coast, uh, a lot of mid and high level clouds rolling across the area there today. Uh, a little more than I thought there was gonna be, but it was, ba it was a dry day, no precipitation, winds light, mostly cloudy here all the way to the eastern border through the eastern interior. There are a few breaks where it's a little thinner over the Copper River Basin and the mid and upper Tanana Valley. Isolated light showers, southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula, Kind of a weak southeast flow there, but uh, rain about a tenth of an inch falling today in Kodiak and then up, up into Kamishak Bay and along the eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range, but quite light and kind of a mixture of conditions here. With temperatures in the mid to upper 30s, uh, again pushing all the way up into the northwest interior today, but uh, cooler, still near or just slightly below freezing, so no one carrying snow all day long and snow showers down to about Nunavak Island. High pressure out over the Bering Sea here in advance of the next system just coming onto the edge of the chart there over the western Aleutians. We'll see for tonight that definitely cranks the winds up. That gradient tightens the front presses in. Chances of moisture increase, but it's going to be mostly, or well, actually probably coming up to gale force winds even for the central Aleutians late tonight. Storm force winds out west, but light winds under high pressure here with no gradient dissolves. You can see a distinct lack of isobars here across uh, the southeast bearing into Bristol Bay with just some isolated shower activity, conditions improving, maybe some scattered snow showers along the southwest coast into Back Island, improving there, probably a snow ending to just scattered flurries for Nome. And then continuing up here over the uh, Western Brooks Range with the winter storm warnings out, still a chance of snow on the western Arctic coast due to this trough right through here. But this front really breaking up, so I wouldn't look for a lot of precipitation any farther to the east. None in the eastern interior, and you really even start losing the clouds. You get over toward Eagle, southward to Northway and Toke. This system coming northward slowly, 
and that'll continue to feed moisture in the form of mostly rain, Kodiak Island and the coast, south coast of the Kenai Peninsula, into Prince William Sound, a uh, mixture of here up along the Alaska Range in the Cuscombe Valley, but amounts quite light. And then the southeast coast, no change, kind of a mostly cloudy uh, type of condition there, but uh, VFR type clouds, uh, mid and high level clouds continuing. And then for tomorrow, the system warm front moisture brings a chance of precipitation mainly to the central and north coast, uh, possibly pushing inland across Lynn Canal or across Glacier Bay into Lynn Canal in Juneau late in the day, chance of light rain or precip mixed precipitation, dry down to the south. And we've got this uh, Arctic front now with a swath of light snow in areas from the upper Tanaw Valley and that'll extend southwestward into Bristol Bay, northeast Bristol Bay. So a little cooler air shifting eastward. And that'll drop the snow levels back down to near sea level. Otherwise, uh, rain east side of Kodiak Island, mixture for Shelikoff Strait, and a mixture of rain or snow up the uh, Kenai Peninsula there into the Prince William Sound. Isolated snow showers, Copper River Basin. Don't look for a lot there. And still a chance of snow going on here due to this trough up along this, the north slope over the northwest interior areas. But the wind flow kind of coming back around, starting to downslope off the Brooks Range. So this uh, uh, mounts will be quite light here. Just scattered snow showers dried out along the southwest coast today. Winds much lighter across the entire area of Gullivan, seeing 53 mile an hour wind gusts this afternoon. Mountain Village, Cape Newenham, gusts 60 miles an hour today. And for uh, later tonight and tomorrow, those winds will be much lighter and actually reverse direction a little bit there, come light east northeasterly. And then uh, front out west continues eastward here. It's quite windy, occasional rain, or probably pretty solid light rain there for the Adak Yatka area, those gusty winds. It stays windy over the western Aleutians. That low center staying off to the south there, and this front kind of uh, stretching out to the east. And we'll see for uh, Tuesday, that continues to stretch eastward there, and a new development, uh, much weaker than the former low, the, the parent low back to the west develops here, brings chance of rain to the Alaska Peninsula, but the gradient a lot less, the wind's a lot less with this front starting to weaken now, chance of snow lifts up to the Pribilofs, and the main low center keeps it uh, breezy and unsettled, occasional rain and showers out over the central western Aleutian areas. And now this front uh, will make for a kind of a cloudy, rainy day for the entire southeast coast, but winds won't be a problem at all there. Week low right up to the Kenai Peninsula, chance of mixed precipitation, south central Alaska. Band of snow, again, along this Arctic front from the uh, eastern interior, mid and upper Tanana Valley, right across the uh, northern Susitna Valley into Denali Park, Cuscombe Valley, kind of narrowing out here as it gets into the Yukon Cuscombe Delta, Nunavak Island areas with the uh, colder Arctic air now trying to make a return appearance here in the north, especially along the eastern Arctic coast but drying out and northeast winds getting a little gusty through the passes of the uh, Brooks Range there like um, Anatovic, Adigan Passes, probably good stiff north wind in the afternoon. And for uh, low temperatures tonight, uh, either side of zero here through the eastern interior to single numbers up in the upper Yukon Valley, notably milder with a continued su uh, mild southerly flow here. Lower 30s, Bristol Bay and the Cuscombe Valley, cooling into the mid to upper 20s, west central interior. Lower 20s out toward uh, Kotzebue, and then uh, lower teens on the western Arctic coast with Nome forecast low tonight 21, dropping down to 7 at Savunga, and 15 at Makoriak and upper 20s in the Pribilofs, uh, but upper 30s for the Kodiak Island area. Southeast coast, upper 20s or mid to upper 20s to lower to mid 30s, depending on where you are, and uh, out in the Aleutians, mid 30s there. Moving on to the afternoon highs for Monday, anywhere from 5 to 20 here over the eastern interior areas, and lower 20s for much of the uh, North Slope and Arctic coast. Some areas staying in the, uh, or actually some areas even getting up toward 30 degrees. Lower 30s here again around Ambler, southward. Mid to upper 30s here over the Bristol Bay area, lower 40s for Kodiak Island, and uh, mid 30s, South Central Alaska, you can see uh, still 40 degrees working in there, probably at Palmer. High near freezing for the Pribilofs, near 40 for the Central Aleutians, and mid 30s to mid 40s for the Southeast Coast, and the lows for Tuesday morning. 
in the 30s, but all above freezing there for the Panhandle, and uh, upper uh, mid 30s for the North Gulf Coast, a little below freezing South Central Alaska, so staying mild, but notice up to the north, beginning to uh, fall back a little farther below zero there for the North Slope and Arctic Coast, down at 10 to 15 degrees below zero in that range, down in the single numbers of the Seward Peninsula, actually below zero there at Shishmaref, near zero for St. Lawrence Island, mid-teens here along the southwest coast, but still mid-20s for Bristol Bay, mid-30s uh, uh, for the Fox Islands. And then for the afternoon highs, shaping up like this, staying below zero, central Arctic coast, west side as well, definitely cooler in the mid-Tananaw Valley and lower in the mid-30s here across southern Alaska. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Marshall VFR here, Pribilofs, across the central bearing, IFR off to the southwest of the western Aleutians, but VFR from around ADAC all the way to Unalaska Dutch Harbor, back into the marginal stuff for the Alaska Peninsula, IFR, northeast Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, up into the uh, Kuskokwim Valley, marginal for Cook Inlet and the southern slope central Alaska Range, IFR, southern slopes of the central and western Brooks Range. VFR here along the Panhandle, but uh, also VFR up the uh, eastern interior. And for tomorrow afternoon, conditions deteriorate a little bit there in the 40 mile country. Not too much, but uh, some areas of marginal VFR starting to show up. Also some marginal VFR on the extreme north coast of the Panhandle, otherwise pretty good and IFR Gulf of Alaska, Prince William Sound uh, pushing up inland there to the Copper River Basin, mainly the western side. IFR back here to the west, northwest breaking out to VFR as well as the eastern Beaufort Sea coast and IFR now slides on in to the western Aleutians to ADAC, otherwise marginal, until you get to Nunavak Island and the Bering Strait and St. Lawrence Island, VFR. For Tuesday morning, a widespread IFR here now from the northeast interior right on down to the uh, Bristol Bay area, Togiak Bay and Kuskokwim Bay, Perbilofs IFR, Alaska Peninsula, Eastern Aleutians, all the Aleutians now, mostly IFR, Gulf of Alaska, IFR, Northern Panhandle here, and along the coast, staying VFR off to the south and southeast. And for Tuesday afternoon, mostly IFR here for the Panhandle, IFR, North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, Northern Cook Inlet, including the Manuska Sasitna Valley, and uh, northward there across the Alaska Range and uh, across the mid and upper Tanana Valley up to Eagle, a little bit better down to the south, good VFR up to the north and northwest all the way out to the Arctic coast to St. Lawrence Island, then back into the marginal and IFR conditions here, especially when you get down over the southern Bering Sea and into the Aleutians. For Anatovic tomorrow, VFR with marginal VFR on the southern approach, same forecast for Adigan. Southerly flow keeping uh, marginal VFR southern entrance, otherwise VFR off to the north. Lake Clark and Merrill occasionally marginal, same forecast for rainy, marginal VFR at times. For windy, marginal VFR, north side though, staying VFR into the valley. And for Isabel, marginal VFR with IFR in the southern entrance. Mintasta, VFR, marginal VFR south side. And Tanita, look for a marginal VFR kind of day through that pass tomorrow. IFR definitely for Portage. Chilkoot and White, another day of VFR flying. And for the freezing levels here, uh, at the surface right near the Pribilofs into northern Bristol Bay, a little above here, southern Bering Sea, 2,000 feet finally showing up here, uh, but still south of the western Aleutians. Otherwise, uh, Pretty much what we saw for the last several days here, 2,000 feet over the northern Panhandle, warmer conditions down toward the Queen Charlottes. And for icing, southerly flow bringing moisture up, so considerable moderate here from the Gulf of Alaska into Prince William Sound to about Cape Yakutaga, trying to, well, probably not getting past the coast range, otherwise some uh, lighter icing possibilities right up uh, in toward the Yukon River there and northeast Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island and another zone out here to the west with that front, kind of a narrow band of uh, considerable moderate, otherwise light to isolated moderate rime out in that area. Jet stream, there's that southerly flow, 100 knots pulling that moisture right northward here. Another high developing a little farther to the northwest there, southwest St. Lawrence Island, but this ridge holding, but the entire pattern slowly shifting eastward and something coming over the top here. Taking a look at 9,000 feet, we've got low pressure, northeast Bristol Bay, 25 
Across Kodiak, southeast 35 North Gulf Coast, uh, pretty light here over the eastern interior with ridging from Canada all the way out linking up to that high near St. Lawrence Island and uh, stronger lows southwest of the Aleutians, so southeasterlies 35 to 45 knots, 25 for the Fox Islands, southerlies uh, 15 to 20 at most for the Panhandle, 3,000 feet, uh, really light there, 10 knots, but 25 to 35 North Gulf Coast, light over the interior, westerlies 20 knots, North Slope and Arctic Coast. Southeast, uh, pretty strong out here through the central Aleutians, 55 to 60 knots, but only light and variable over the Alaska Peninsula. Turbulence, occasional moderate chop here, Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, and central western Aleutians. And uh, after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. The Space Weather Prediction Center has had a long-standing relationship with the power industry, so they've been aware that solar storms, the geomagnetic storm piece of that, can affect the operation of their systems and induce extra currents and loads on those systems that can either trip those systems offline or, or in the worst of cases, cause damage. That relationship goes back for several decades, in fact. A big incident in 1989 where part of Quebec was tripped offline that affected something like six million customers for about nine hours. I think that really raised the awareness in the power industries. When we get the alert, we watch the grid and start looking for issues. Are we seeing a decline in voltage? Are we seeing equipment failures? And we readjust the system to try to mitigate those problems, try to keep the lights on and keep it from going out. So averaging about 500, 550 kilometers per second. If we didn't have this early warning, we wouldn't see it until our sensor saw it. Getting more information quicker and faster before the storm hits, not during the storm, is a big improvement. In the long term, I think what we need and what we're moving toward the U.S. as a whole is better modeling, fully understanding this phenomenon, understanding how it would impact specific systems. Rather than actually experiencing a storm, we can simulate storms in our software and see what the impact is. We try to get ahead of it. We always plan that if there's an outage, how can we keep the lights on? What's the best process to prevent it? In the end, five, ten years from now, there's going to be a whole mix of operational procedures driven by what we do on prediction and warning, and then there also will probably be some level of hardware controls to ensure the reliability of the grid. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. There's different types of impacts on communication systems. And the HF, we call the high frequency, which is that band of communications, 3 to 30 megahertz. But it's a very important band of radio communication because it's used widespread. It's used, for example, by the airlines. HF radio is most commonly used for position reporting when you're going across the ocean airspace, which is devoid of, of radar. And, and ATC can't see you, so you're, it's up to you to report your position and your altitude and your speed. HF works great most of the time, except during a big flare. During a big flare, that HF communication capability will be gone within a minute or two. So as soon as we see something happening in there, or we see a flare, it's one of the first things we do is alert the aviation community, hey, big flare, HF's gonna be impacted. Once we know that there's an event going on, 
then the aviation industry and the airlines can react to that. They can alter their routes over the poles. They can lower the altitudes that they're flying at or maybe decide not to fly at all in the interest of their passenger safety. So that's just one example of how EHF is used, but the emergency response community will use it a lot too. It's one of the primary backups. When you've lost connectivity between certain government agencies, it gives you that long-range coverage to talk from out of state to federal governments or from the FEMA locations to the state uh, emergency operations centers. So if you've got a big hurricane impact in the coastline, whatever big city, uh, we've got the cell towers down and whatnot, we've got emergency communication folks in there. Those folks are very familiar with space weather and how it impacts their systems. Here in recent years, it was used during Katrina when we had a lot of communications outages down there. It was also used during Hurricane Ike. There was an outage of the telephone circuits with the Texas State Emergency Office, so it was used in both of those situations. So when we talk about backup, especially for the airlines, typically they'll have SATCOM, so it'll be satellite communication. The satellite technology that emergency responders use could be GPSs, could be satellite phones, satellite data terminals. Space weather events can impact SATCOMs. The impact can range from a nuisance to loss of a spacecraft. So we will give them the heads up. If we have space weather events, flares, whatnot, they need to know what's impacting their systems. Situational awareness is key. Time is of essence to these folks. Again, it's life and death. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Today's sea ice analysis still showing uh, ice in and around St. Matthew Island, especially north and, of course, east of the island there. And uh, kind of a light northwest wind today. And it looks like later in the week, northeast winds will kick back in again and start to expand it southwestward. In the meantime, uh, just about all, there, well, there's been some retreat up here uh, through this portion of the ice edge and just about all the ice now is out of Bristol Bay. And for the coastal water forecast on the southern coast or the south coast of the outer coastline here for the Panhandle, southeast 20, 25 knots. Those increase to gale force out of the southeast on the north coast. Seas building 11 to 12 feet. Lynn Canal, light winds out of the north, northeast 10 for Stevens Passage and light easterlies here for Clarence Strait. Outlook for Tuesday, southeast 15, central and southern inside waters, northern inside channels, south 20, and small craft advisories on the south coast, southeast winds there, 15 foot seas, and continuation of gale force southeasterlies on the north coast with seas at 16 feet. Cook Inlet, uh, big increase in the winds from today in the forecast here, 30 knots north of the Forelands, north and, and south of the Forelands, gale force northerly, 35 and increase to 40 knots out of the northeast for Kamishak Bay. Otherwise, east winds 35 knots, western North Gulf Coast and the Barren Islands, southeast 40 there for the zone that Middleton Island's in, and Prince William Sound east at 30 with seas at 7 feet. And small craft advisories hold there in Prince William Sound into Tuesday, east 25, 6 foot seas, winds uh, swing around southwest 20 to 30 knots for the North Gulf Coast, west 20, Barren Islands, West 15 here, Southern Cook Inlet and Kamishak Bay, and Northeast 15 for Northern Cook Inlet. Kodiak Island, Chillicoff Strait, Northeast 25 tomorrow, otherwise North 15 on the east side of the coast. Uh, southwest of Sitkanak, Northwest winds 20 knots, and the peninsula variable at 10, with uh, Bristol Bay north at 10, with we'll seas at just four feet. We'll swing around to the south, but stay light on Tuesday there with four foot seas. Sitkin Acti Castle Cape south 20 knots and then the winds increasing here with that uh, system sliding eastward. Weak though, but uh, 15 to 25 knot winds, or I'm sorry, 20 to 25 knot winds. Seas coming up to about 12 feet in the Pacific side of the peninsula. And uh, out west, uh, really good storm force winds coming into the western Aleutians tomorrow. East 60 knots and uh, southeast 50 to 55 knots in the central Aleutians. 
and then falling back to small craft advisory level, southeast to east, 25 to 30 for the Fox Islands. And for Tuesday, east to southeast, 25 to 30 continue there. And the wind's coming down for Adak and Atka, south-southeast at 30, and holding on to the gales here. So losing the storms, but still east-southeast, 35 to 40 for much of the western Aleutian chain. And for the Perbolofs tomorrow, east at 20 knots, north 10 along the southwest coast, northeast 15 for St. Matthew Island, and north 15 for St. Lawrence Island, and even lighter winds in Norton Sound. But those will pick up on Tuesday. First going to advisories here, St. Lawrence Island, Norton Sound for winds out of the north up to 30 knots, and northeast 25 to 30 here right into St. Matthew Island, northeast 20 coming out of er, uh, Kuskokwim Bay, and uh, east 25 for the Perbolos with 10-foot seas. Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast tomorrow, south to southeast at about 20, but uh, brisk wind advisories here from the central coast all the way down to Cape Thompson, west 25 knots, northwest 25 for the Chuck CC. And then on Tuesday, brisk wind advisories here from Wales up to Cape Thompson, otherwise uh, falling back here to west 20 on the west side, and then west 25 for the central and eastern Beaufort Sea Coast. For tonight, uh, high pressure, uh, keeping the weather pretty calm here over the eastern Bering Sea into Bristol Bay, just some leftover scattered showers over the peninsula. Storm warnings coming in with that tight gradient, or the tight uh, pressure field ahead of that front and low pressure system out west. Looks like rain into Kodiak Island trying to slip up into the Kenai Peninsula. Areas of probably mixed precipitation through here depending on your elevation and latitude. And diminishing snow kind of hanging on up here in the northwest at least through tomorrow and then kind of developing along this Arctic frontal boundary here from the uh, upper Tanaw Valley back into northeast Bristol Bay and then that kind of starting to collide with the warmer air. So there'll be some mixed precipitation along the North Gulf Coast. Rain Kodiak Island, probably rain for Sildovia and increasing chances of rain for the Panhandle will translate into just a rainy day on Tuesday. Light snow along this Arctic front and cooler back to the north. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.